Let's talk about the value of radiographs in the diagnosis of DCM. Obviously, in the early, uh, in the early stages, we do not see changes on radiographs because sometimes these dogs only have arrhythmias and the heart is not yet changed. And on the other side, um, it might be just too early to detect changes yet. On the other side, if we are in an advanced stage, then radiographs are quite good to detect an enlarged globoid cardiac silhouette. We might detect left or right heart or both um, uh, atrial enlargements. Radiographs are also um, the best method to detect pulmonary edema. We also might detect with right heart failure pleural effusion. So in advanced clinical stages, radiographs are good. To detect the occult phase, not so good. Let's talk about the value of echocardiography. And echocardiography is basically the method of choice to diagnose the dilated heart and poorly contracting heart. What we can see is that the heart is instead of pumping normally, it, is, has, a, it has a poor systolic function. And to detect a poor systolic function, several methods are available. Classically, the fractional shortening or the ejection fractions are the measurements that are usually done and that are recommended in the literature. However, um, looking just at the fractional shortening might cause some problems because there is a quite large gray zone and it's also prone to some measurement errors. For example, if you have a heart that has a poor contractility, the easiest way would be to look at the end systolic diameter. So here it is small because the heart is contracting very well. So if we have a systolic problem, the systolic diameter from here to here, measured by M mode, for example, will increase. As a secondary change, we talked about um, how the heart is changing. Secondary, we get a volume overloaded heart. So also the diastolic diameter will increase later in time. On echocardiography, using the conventional parameters, we also might detect an enlarged left atrium. And the more progressive the disease is, the larger the left and or the right atrium. Making a diagnosis of a clinical DCM on echo, where we have a severely dilated and poorly contracting heart, is actually quite easy. You can see a typical example on the video where we have a dilated left atrium, a dilated left ventricle that has also a poor systolic um, function. The dog has also some pleural effusion and um, therefore there's left and right heart failure in this dog. So just recently, um, it was shown in Dobermans um, that a method that is called the Simpson method of DISC um, is a test that is actually better than the M mode in the diagnosis of early cardiac changes in Dobermans. In humans, it is known that the Simpson method of DISC is actually the gold standard to diagnose a volume uh, change of the heart, either in systole or in diastole. In M mode, the disadvantage is that we just measure along one line and then uh, we just calculate from that the size of the heart. We have shown here in that study that using the Simpson method, we can uh, make an earlier diagnosis compared to the M mode and therefore um, the Simpson method of DISC is the best method to detect echo early changes in Dobermans. It is also a very reliable method, so the repeatability of that method is also quite good. 
And since this is the gold standard in humans anyways, it should be as a measurement program in almost any um, cardiac ultrasound machine. So to summarize, the Simpson method of DISC is a very sensitive test that also has a high specificity. And primarily we look at the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. So the measurement of the Simpson method is actually quite easy. All what we need to do is to acquire a right parasternal long axis, so our standard view, and we also recommend to do that from a left apical view as well. So we do measure the Simpson method in two different views. We go at end diastole when the mitral valve is closed and the ventricle is quite large and now I'm tracing along the endocardial um, surface telling the ultrasound machine where is the endocardial wall. And now the computer will actually uh, form these lines and each line is one disk and now it adds the volume of each disk and calculates me a volume. So even if the heart is getting rounder using this method um, we will see volume changes in contrast to M mode which uh, might only show me the measurement at one place in the heart.